Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium where we finally found our corpse. However, disappointingly, we can't really do much with it at the moment. We can't even take it down from that tree because, I don't know, I guess I may need the help of a kid to do it since only a child can climb that ladder. I mean, we have two kids over here, but... They're like the most annoying children ever, so I'm not sure if I will be able to make them cooperate. Um, but we do have some other tasks we can take care of. Also, I seem to remember that we had some stuff over here that I didn't investigate yet. I'm not sure if I can reach this stuff over here. Nope, that's out of my reach. But what about this here? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing mm. material, Etonite. What is this? Okay, I have a perception check here, which has uh, some decent odds. But yeah, what exactly is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Hmm, are you sure? I mean, it looks like it might be hiding something, a door or an opening. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented Etonite in the Vartner Polytechnic Institute <sighs> some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name, Etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing turned out to be the material's highly carcinogenic <laughs> effect. Well, uh, thank you for that useless piece of information. But yeah, I feel there might be something behind it. So let's have a closer look. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because it's nice and orderly. Mm. Well laid pallets. Easy on the eyes. Okay, well, that was a failure, but it's a white check, I believe. So I can try this again if I have more perception. Because I'm pretty sure there's something behind it. Rhythmic pattern. Calms your mind. Mammals <laughs> like this stuff. Well, at least it gave me my morale back because apparently I like rhythmic patterns, so I'll take it. Um, we have some stuff over here, but oh, he's like trying to path find a way to this place, and it's not through here. So maybe we will. Uh, deal with that later because uh, I probably have to go all the way around the building for this. Um, also, there is some stuff over here but again I probably can't reach it. Yeah I'm pretty sure I have to get inside this shed and then I can open the hatch and there's something up here that I may have to pick up but at the moment I can't really do any uh, anything of that. Um, I don't know, let's maybe let's have another look at the corpse because I there feel there must he be still more is, to this. Looking right through you with his white eyes. <laughs> the body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. I mean I do have this endurance check here, which I will most likely fail, but it is a white check, so uh, I guess I will give it a try. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. <laughs> well, maybe let's uh, walk away if we can. Uh oh. <laughs> Great! You totally threw up on Kim's feet. At least you could have tried to Too direct late. it somewhere else. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. Great. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled <laughs> spirit and bits of shish kebab. Well, fucking corpse, right? Keep it. The lieutenant hands you a blue checkered handkerchief. Oh, that's very nice. I don't need your pity. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. 
You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia would help? Okay, where do we get ammonia from? I don't need that shit. Uh, wasn't the gardener using something against the smell? Maybe she can tell us where to find it. That young woman, the gardener, mm -hmm. mentioned she used salts for the smell. Right, right. So maybe we should ask her about that. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the Fried store nearby. The Fried store? Fried with three T's? <laughs> okay. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Oh, okay. Tutorial agent. <laughs> I think this is the first time I actually got something like a tutorial. Um, okay, so I need to get that ammonia and then I can try this again. Why is it so bad? Because it's a corpse that has been hanging here for quite some time. Um, but okay, I guess at least we got some idea what to do next. Inspect the victim's body. Get ammonia from the gardener or the frit store. It'll make it easier. Right. I want to talk to the gardener anyway, so that's rather convenient. Um, well, and I guess I will try to talk to the girl as well, Kun Wes. Not sure that's Kuno, going the pig's to getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff me. my shit out, I think. Take one step closer. Why? Why can't I just talk to her? Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. <laughs> Come on, I just want to ask you a few questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. <laughs> going away for life. You're being a little bit dramatic, huh? What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? Listen, child, the smell is so bad that I threw up and I was wondering. Yes, what were you wondering? What are those strange words you use, girl? Um, she didn't use any strange words. As far as I can tell, all the words she used were perfectly normal English, so I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, kid, child, converse with me. You there behind the fence. Um, yeah, can we please talk? Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. She has almost vanished behind the fence, only the top of her head remains. <laughs> what is going on? But yeah, um, these kids are not much help. Um... Yeah, I guess I I will just take care of something else. I will talk to the gardener. Also, um, I can try to open the uh, trash container, right? Open the trash container. Uh, and for that, I should probably try to get the key. So, let's uh, do this next. These brats are not going to help me anyway. Instead, gardener it is. Hello again, officer. How are things? Um, do you still have your salt? I think I could use some. Tell me what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Um, yeah, maybe let's ask for the salts first before we continue to interrogate her. Sure. <coughs> I'm done with them. All right. There we go. That was easy. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Can't be worse than the smell. Now, let's talk about your gardening. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Well, I mean, I don't know enough about gardening to uh, figure out if she's telling the truth. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Okay. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. The grandma is a bit too much. What nutrients? Visual calculus. Plus one disingenuous grandma? <laughs> Squint your eyes and look at her intently. So basically, we do not believe her story about the grandma. Um, but yeah, what nutrients are you talking about? 
nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, let's, let's try this skill check. I mean, this is a pretty good chance. Stop looking at yep. her. Look around. What do you see? The traffic jam, the plaza, an entrance to the yard. Well, all of it. That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye hmm. on you. All right. So are you insinuating that she's here to watch me? Hmm. Interesting. Are you by any chance keeping an eye on us? Noted, but I'll keep it to myself. I mean, maybe he's just paranoid, but I guess it's possible. Because apparently people around here do not really trust the police, so it would make sense that someone put somewhere here to you know, keep an eye on me. And if that's the case, maybe I should keep it to myself. You know, play dumb for now and not not let her know that I might be onto her if, you know, she's actually uh, doing this. So yeah, I'll just keep it to myself. Glad to have been of service. <laughs> now you know, the locals are keeping tabs on you. Mm. Okay, okay, I get it. Right, so, um... I have the ammonia so I can return to the body. But maybe I will first try to open the trash container, which means I will talk to Gart. Um, I mean, I, I have apparently a map tab, but there isn't really much going on here. Map information incomplete. Acquire a copy of the city map. So, no map so far. But yeah, um, let's go back inside maybe and... Um, try to get the key to the trash container and then we will return to the body. Also, um, what did I just get here? It's the ammonia, right? And the handkerchief. That's quite the expensive handkerchief, apparently. I mean, if I compare it to all the other items, this is the most valuable one. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get that key from him, and I might be able to get into the kitchen soon as well. Can I help you? Alright, let's talk about that trash container. Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. <laughs> That's what I meant, you dummy. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? <laughs> well, Kim uh, was um, much more polite telling him that. Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbours too. They put their trash there and they don't <laughs> pay for the garbage company. Okay. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. Mm. Well, in that case, I'm not sure if I will find anything of interest inside, but I mean, I should uh, try it anyway. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? <laughs> Something stirs in you. Breakthrough imminent? <laughs> okay, um... I'm not sure what he means by this. I wonder what this feeling is. No, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me and it isn't colors, it's common sense. Um, sure, I don't know. Let's investigate this feeling. Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? We need those keys. <laughs> yeah, we do. So, should I really, like, guilt trip him here? I mean, Rhetoric seems to think that I'm onto something, so... I don't know. Let's try it. Callous? What are you? Kras Mazov? Mm. Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. I see. Krasmazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. 
Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, mm -hmm. Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. Yum, yum, tell me more. Maybe I am Krasmazov. I am no Krasmazov. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but uh, sure, tell me more. He killed himself. Oh, great. Um, uh, I, I again don't believe that this is useful information for me. Um, I am Krasmazov. I'm not Krasmazov. I don't think I'm Krasmazov, no. No one was implying you were, officer. <laughs> Where were we? This seems like another completely pointless detour, but okay, um, we still need those keys. What do you need them for? Well, to open the trash can, what do you think? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Well, that was actually easier than I thought. Um, well, it's almost 1 p.m. Not quite. Ah, there we go. The internization is Bad complete. News. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic <laughs> asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single Wonderland skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s. <laughs> and also as a warning. Okay, um, very interesting background information. Probably not useless, although this is an interesting imagery over here. Plus one pain threshold. Blood oxygen is boring. All psyche learning caps raised by one. I guess that's good. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure about the information I got here, but it gave me some bonus, I suppose. Um, okay, yeah, this one still needs a while, but I guess I will continue to do it. Alright, um, whatever, we got the key. Let's return to the trash container and the corpse. All right. Maybe let's start with the fresh container. This is the logo of the municipality of Revachol. All right. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says "Whirling in Rags." Um. Oh, okay, I'm just going to pick this option. Open the padlock with a key. Okay, let's do it. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Well, let's do it. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Why? Come on, I, I worked hard to get this open. What's this? Open the lid another time, maybe. So why do you think I shouldn't be doing this? Just the feeling. A warning from some part of mm. you. I'm not sure what I think about Inland Empire, to be honest. I'm going to open that damn lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. So, nothing of interest inside. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Um, I mean, maybe I should be using my salts already because this is probably kind of smelly as well look under the boxes of carton look at the racks search the food waste close the lid um i don't know let's let's do it all i mean i have my uh gloves so i hope this is going to make it easier you see milk and egg rest with one broken egg <laughs> in it some pasta wrapper picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar Oh, great. I guess you've done this before. You've done this before. Mm -hmm. The movements are recorded in your elbows, the methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. Used to what dumpster diving? Dive further. Maybe you've just been doing it as part of your job. This would be the more optimistic uh, interpretation of this, I suppose. No, 
Searching for evidence okay. in the trash. Well, I'm relieved. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. Hmm. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Okay, what about the rags? Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. All right. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Huh, okay. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Okay, but who put them inside here if only uh, the manager has a key and, well, the people who uh, collect the waste, I suppose. Drop them in here, officer. Okay, so we actually found some proper evidence here. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Thank you. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pockets empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Well, let's see. Something slimy catches your eye. I guess I'm going to reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. So I guess we're going to back that as well. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of ribbed shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? Okay, again, some useful evidence. The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right, we should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. <laughs> he nods towards the red-haired boy behind him. But yeah, I mean, he would have needed the key as well. Right? So how did it end up in the locked container? Yeah, we need to ask the kids who put them there. You think, so you think someone from the whirling might have been involved, maybe? I feel there has to be because of you know, no, the locked padlock. Um, yeah... Let's let's ask this. Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and his establishment had the key. It's just a small hmm. loose thread. I don't know. I feel this is kind of important. Um, so maybe we need to talk to the kid again. The fuck's he on about, kids? <laughs> you that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. Well, what are you if not an infant? See? Yeah, I mean, these kids are weird. I'm not sure if they would murder someone, though. Especially since apparently this guy was some kind of security person, so <laughs> probably uh, not easy to kill. But I guess they may have, you know, disposed of the, the trousers. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. All right, we do have um, more stuff we can look at, like the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, mm -hmm. what's this? What? Elbows out, there's nothing more here. Well, you're making me curious, though. A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple pills. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Okay. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. A damaged ledger, okay. Officer, is that your paperwork? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's what it is. It is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. Huh. You've even got an autopsy form in there. Okay, well, I mean, 
Uh, we know that they apparently ended up in my uh, toilet at some point. And our party there in the trash. Um, okay, a miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? It must have been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. That's why I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. That's actually quite a, a realistic possibility. I'd rather not talk about it right now. <laughs> or maybe it has just been cramping my style. Right. Officer, this is an official piece of paperwork. It probably contains notes on numerous ongoing investigations and could even list undercover operatives, informants. I suggest integrating it into your style mm. for all our sakes. Okay, may, you may have a point Easier there. Easier said than done. How could this pathetic cabbage of copy paper and plastic ever become tre disco? I don't know. Uh, maybe put some colors on it? Challenge accepted. <laughs> you should be on the lookout for stylistic elements that elevate this cabbage to heights unforeseeable. What I should do is get back to that garbage. All right, then. Seems like a good idea. Right after the garbage, of course. <laughs> Again, this seems like a really pointless task. But on the other hand, how can I not accept it? <laughs> yeah, sure. I will disco up my paperwork. Good choice. Soggy carton and some kind of food sludge welcome you back. Mm. Invitingly. Great. Officer, this is sensitive information. You need to take this seriously. Okay, I'll do that. Say nothing. I don't know, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. <laughs> I mean, he's just meaning well, so... I will try to take it a little bit serious. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Um, there might be more to this trash container. Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the Interact tab to read your paperwork. <laughs> Thank you, tutorial agent. Um, oh, I can't look at my inventory while I'm in a discussion. Okay, so I will do this after, after this. Um, so do I need the mug? You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist <laughs> depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Is it an antique? Only in its social sensibility. Mm. Well, uh, I guess I'll take it. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant briefly glances at the mug and returns his sight to the trash. I mean, it might be evidence. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. All right. The container sounds a muffled gong. I think we're done here. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. I think so too. Now, let's have a look at the stuff we just retrieved. Um, interact. Damage ledger. Use interact button in inventory to inspect the book. The meanest looking pair of cutters Oh no, this is about the chain cutters. This is a damage ledger. This is the ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes on the case. I would actually appreciate that. So let's It's interact. the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint <laughs> smell of urinal cleaner. All right, anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. Can we remove the toilet paper? It's a metaphor for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, waterlogged ledger, for spelling it out for us. <laughs> yes. Inspect the toilet paper. Inspect the clip. Browse the white papers. Browse the yellow papers. Look at the clipboard. Smell the ledger. Um, okay, let's just uh, inspect the toilet paper first. 
It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Take it off. Leave it there. It's cool. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. Hmm. Interesting thought. If you want it to be kitchen <laughs> tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. Okay, so maybe it's not. It's not, though. It's toilet paper. Well, then let's take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, kitchen tissue, sorry, peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. All right, success. Now let's inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. All right, run your fingers across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. <laughs> okay. Looks like an official mark, made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? Lieutenant, is this one of the hologram wa watermarks you mentioned? I mean, it would make sense if it's on my ledger that it has like this watermark. What? Yes, uh, allergen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Interesting, what kind of information? Would it maybe include my name, for example? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information huh. varies by date of issue. I mean, address, I would take that as well. Maybe yours will have how many cases <laughs> you've solved. So, can I read it by using your car? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Well, I have a flashlight. You mentioned the headlights of your Kinema. Yes, RCM vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks. Okay, so I definitely want to do this. Maybe this will tell me who I am or where I live. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. All right, very nice. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Now, let's have a look at the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in matches <laughs> by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred <laughs> sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Well, apparently at some point I have been keeping proper notes of all my cases. Um, so what are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. <laughs> but there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. That's a lot of cases all at once. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Hmm, okay. What do you mean? Is that all? That's it. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? There was a mention of a naming convention here. Count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? I'm done inspecting these closer files. Um, yeah, I don't know. Two cases a week doesn't sound uh, too bad, honestly. Huh? <laughs> two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Okay, so maybe he's suffering from a little bit of a burnout. 
Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Yeah. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. <laughs> it was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. I burned out all right. A nice brisk pace, the way I like it. Yeah, I feel he may have burned out, and that's why he uh, ended up the way he is at the moment. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Hmm, great. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. So what about this naming convention? Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary <laughs> system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Okay. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. <laughs> what is the significance of that? Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, <laughs> the Unsolvable Case. They sound like titles of crime novels. Do you fancy yourself like a crime author? Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected <laughs> location. And the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. Okay, so clearly I'm a homicide detective. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together. Hmm. But it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close... Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. I'm not sure if he can help me with it, and he seems to be busy with his own notes at the moment. Um, but I guess I'll ask him anyway. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? <laughs> no, I'm afraid they're non-numeric. Instead they have titles. Like, bad uh, crime fiction titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. <laughs> Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named the case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. I mean, that sounds very mysterious. Again. In your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. <laughs> that was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that. Okay, so well, <laughs> I'm glad that we have something in common here and that it's just, uh, that it's not just me being weird. I pray his loved ones never find out. So what happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace okay. accident. So it wasn't a bullet who put the hole in his head. Okay, um, let's count the pages. Do I have, uh, do I have to open an official case here? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. <laughs> Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. All right, let's commit to paper using the pen Lena gave you. Right, I, I have a pen. Very useful. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental <sighs> rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. So let's cross out the ones I've already finished, which is I've interviewed the cafeteria manager and I guess I still have to inspect the body now that I have the ammonia. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it <laughs> seems to say. And you, and you. You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry, <laughs> and it feels good. Feels like 
completion. All right, I like it. I mean, I did need to heal my morale, but still. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to <laughs> name the case. Right. Well, Kim, do you already named our case here? No, actually. Any ideas? The hanged men. The Furies are at home in the mirror. <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The setting sun. Shit on a stick. Actually, I don't have one. <laughs> I mean, this is very obvious. It's also a reference to a tarot card. So it's at least kind of clever, I suppose. <laughs> the furious out home in the mirror, the setting sun, shit on the stick. Um, I don't know. I'm going for the weirdest of them all. Furies. Yes, well, the I don't know. <laughs> I have to be honest. I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, <laughs> he doesn't like it. Could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Okay. Think, what would that be? A good normal name? Well, I guess it would be the hanged man. Yes, yes. You know what that normal name is. But it's <sighs> so plain. Anything else, please. <laughs> well, I tried the strange name. He didn't appreciate it. So I guess I'll go with the normal one. Great. That's great. <laughs> That's actually what I was thinking too. <laughs> the Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. Well, um, at least I made Kim happy, so I'm actually happy with his uh, choice. <laughs> I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. <laughs> I think that Kim doesn't really have much of an imagination, so <laughs> he's very pragmatic, I think. Okay, I think I'm done inspecting my files, but that was really helpful. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. I mean, I still have the yellow papers and the clipboard, and I can smell the ledger. And um, I can read the case files, maybe. I mean, it's a pretty high chance, so let's try this. It's a white check as well. It's proving to no! be harder than expected. <laughs> you just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Uh, so I have to increase my logic. I mean, didn't I? Oh, but it was the internalization about uh, Guillaume Limillon that cost me some logic. So that's not going to change. Um... All right, well, in that case, <laughs> I will have to put some stuff into logic. I mean, I do have um, a point available at the moment, so I guess I could just try this, right? Then again, I have so many skills that might need <laughs> some, some extra points, um, so I will have to think about this, to be honest. Um, anyway, there's clearly more stuff I can do here, like looking at the yellow papers and the clipboard and so on. But if this is going to take as long as reading the white papers, um, it will be too long for this episode. So I think I'm going to put the ledger away for now. And, um, yeah, I got some new tasks to put the clothes in the trash, style your paperwork. Yeah, at some point, I really have to start to prioritize some of this stuff, because um, some of them are definitely more important than others. This one seems to be um, very useful. All right, um, anyway, I think I'm going to end the episode here. <laughs> and in the next one, we will continue to uh, investigate the ledger. Maybe I will actually put a point into logic so I can read the case files. I mean, they're previous cases, so I'm not sure if it's really useful for my current case. So I'm, I'm not uh, completely uh, convinced that I really need to do this at the moment. But I will also um, use the salts to properly investigate the cops. But for now, let's call it a day. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.